All right, guys, I've been shopping on eBay again, and you never know what you're going to get. And this is this is a good thing. This I, I ordered this because it was a dimple lock. I really didn't know. I just kind of order them randomly when I see a new dealer. And there's nothing really unique about this keyway. If we can get that camera to focus, come on. There we go. Nothing unusual about it. I think we've seen something like this. It's a no name. But then when I took it out of the package and flipped it over, I saw something quite different. Now we have eight pins, but more importantly, you'll notice that the spacing between those first three and that one, and then the last word, that it's for some reason is different, both sides. So I don't know, I quite know what to expect from that. So then I opened up the package of keys. And again, we have some weirdness. We have two keys that are red. We have one key that has some little notches cut into it. And then we have a normal key, four of these guys. So um, I read the instructions. And for those of you who can't read Chinese, I'll, I'll just basically translate this to you. <laughs> so what I believe this says is that this would be the A key. So this is a construction key. You say you're having some work done on the house or apartment. The, the guys that do the work get the red keys. When they're finished, and they get down to step two and step three, you pick up the B key, the one with the notch in it. Stick it inside of there, and then you rotate it 360 degrees. And at that point, the A keys will no longer work, and only the remaining four permanent keys will. Now, it's a great theory, and, and, and so we're just going to go with it. Um, let's try it. Let's not reset it just yet, because I want to do that uh, after we pick it. But you see, we take the red key, and it does work. And at the same time, I'm not going to use the notched one, but I'm going to take the normal operating key and slide it in there, and it also works beautifully. I don't want to do the change yet, but let's compare these two keys just for the heck of it. So when you take a look at these guys, you'll notice that almost all of the cuts except the ones on the tip are different. So something happens with that notched location to change the pinning in that last pin. I don't know what happens, but let's go ahead and pick it. And then I'll go ahead and cut it. So we'll have one side that I'll demonstrate the change on after I pick it. And then we'll cut it. And then we'll have one unchanged side. And we can compare the two to see what exactly this notch key does to on this construction key. Exactly how this construction lock works. All right, that ought to hold it. We got it Chinese style with pins down. Um, it does still work. I haven't done any modifications to it. The construction key still works. And the non-notched operating key obviously still works. And we're going to try to pick it using the top of the keyway. Try to keep my hand out of your way a little bit and with a flat flag. I'm going to index in the top left corner of the keyway and then push those pins down, obviously. All right, so light tension. Let's see what we got. Feels like pin two. Little click. No speed bumps. Oh. Okay, pin one. Reverse picking order. Okay, gotta click on him. Looking for a there we go. Pin two again. There we go. Another click. Pin three. Slight click. Alright, feels like pin six. Okay, that was seven. Okay, I'm on pin four on the back side of him. Can't pull out out. Good click. There's like five. Oh no, he went down pretty easy. Now six again. Takes a little more finesse with this lock than I thought. I thought we could bully him, but that's just not the case. 
I haven't detected any security pins in the sky at all. Here we go. Six had popped up again. There we go, that was six again. Not used to putting a pick in quite that deep. That was five. I've really gotten light on the tension here. All right, that feels like seven. And there we go. Wow, that's a little tougher than I thought it was going to be. Anyway, uh, there are no security pins. They're all standard pins. We got open, and of course I've turned it so that we've the pins have now jumped up from the Bible into the keyway. Let me take a pick and push them, try to push them down. Get in there. And turn him back. Come on. Might not be the right pick for this. Let's try something with a little flatter base, not, no curvature. Come on. This will teach me to pay attention. Goodness gracious, this is just as hard as picking it. All right, I'm going to use a wider pick. Maybe that 15,000 was the wrong one to grab. Get down, for God's sake. There we go. Whew, man, that was almost as tough as picking it, for real. All right, now let's do the change key. Let me back out of here so we can get a good look at what we're doing. Uh, this, obviously, is the construction key. And look at that. I must have picked it to I must have picked it to the, whatever the notched key does because now the construction key is not working. Let's find out. Um, let's try the operating key. In fact, that's exactly what happened. How odd was that? Luckily, we're going to be able to look at the other side and see exactly what happened. Let's just try the notched one and see if he still works after making the change. And he does. So after making the change, this guy still works. All right, let me go ahead and cut this. Now, remember the side with the label. Let's get him out of here. In fact, let me get a, uh, let me grab a magic marker and let's just put an X. This is the side that we've picked and we've already converted. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mark these guys so that there's no modification. You guys don't know I'm pulling your leg here. No reason to at this point. Um, I'm gonna cut him. And then I'm going to pull this guy apart, and I'm going to pull that guy apart. And we're going to be able to compare the two and see what that notch does on both sides, on, on the, key, the uh, keyway, or on the core, to make it uh, construction key nullified. All right, guys, this has turned into quite an ordeal and investigation. I've been, actually had <laughs> to destroy four locks. And the best I can come up with at this point is a theory. Okay, so let's, let me tell you my observations. First of all, uh, these are not eight pins. They have eight, what appear to be eight pins, but that last one right there is a fake. It doesn't go anywhere. So it's only a seven pin lock. Second of all, all of the cores on these are skeletonized. Now notice it's skeletonized basically for every single chamber except this last one right here. And there's a reason for that. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this is when you disassemble your lock, make sure you turn it so that the key, the open part of the keyway, is pointed towards the Bible. That is the only position that you can safely extract the core without all those drivers popping down inside of the skeletonized 
then forcing you to cut the lock open. Basically, if you do that, you ruin the lock. So just be aware of that. All right, um, why is this such a mystery? Uh, in taking apart all four locks, I found no ball bearings, no nothing to drop out or anything like that. Um, and I just dissected lock after lock after lock, trying to figure out how in the heck this thing works. Well, let's take a quick look. I think I have it figured out. This is the construction key. So when the construction key slides in, and it goes in about that far, notice as it slides in, it pushes them all up basically above the shear line until we get to that last one. When it reaches the shear line, it's all flush except number seven. Now number seven, as I mentioned earlier, it is the only one that doesn't have a skeletonized cutaway for something to fall away into. It's solid all the way around, as you can see except the little cuts that I made to, di to dissect it. So the, there's nothing to fall into uh, all the way around. Make a note though, let me get these lined up so they're all flush again. It lines up right here and the key will then bridge that gap. You with me? All right. The operating key, same kind of thing. I mean, it works, he slides in, but now notice when we get him in the correct position, everybody is perfectly flush. Again, it bridges the gap. There's nothing for anything to fall into. Perfect, all right? Now let's take the construction key, the one with the notch. He slides in, exactly like all the others. By the way, he's got the same cut as the normal key. The only difference is that notch. Notice the notch now lines up with that band and something can drop in there. So normally a ball bearing or an extra wafer pin, something would fall in there and then when you extract the key, it would fall out and the operator would never notice it. Well. I didn't find any of that stuff in here. So I got to looking uh, at all the pins. And I've got two of them on a tray here. All the pins are in pretty good shape, except notice that last one. He's grungy looking. There's some kind of abrasive material on him. And a lot of red dust fell out when I disassembled the lock. I was very careful to open this one. And again, there's that red dust on that last guy. And I believe that it's some kind of abrasive sand or some kind of very mild adhesive so that when you slide the key in, it pushes them above the shear line. And then we use the, the, the uh, construction key to rotate it. He lines up perfectly. Of course, that pin just fell out. But it lines up perfectly. So whatever residue there was when you rotated this to get it open, it's going to fall into that chamber that red dust or whatever. And at that point, when that red dust, it frees up the pin in, in chamber number seven. It frees up the driver by breaking that red stuff loose. When you extract it, that dust falls out, nobody notices anything. And it says to be sure to rotate it 360. And at that point, you can take the operating key, and because the cuts are exactly the same, you can imagine it'll, it'll work just perfectly. And that, I believe, is how this lock works. I'm not saying positively because I didn't find uh, this is the one I took apart without uh, without finding him still frozen in place I mean when I took the lock apart and drug the cylinder out I got this one apart correctly but when I pulled it out all of the pins did come out freely so this number seven wasn't still glued in place so I think if you do it you have to be very very gentle when you disassemble it in order to get it to to stay in place anyway guys that's my theory if anybody else has a theory <laughs> After spending hours trying to figure this out, I would just love to hear what you have to say. All right, guys, three weeks has passed. I hate not having closure. Uh, I really like to know how something works. I hate guessing. So I ordered two more of these things from the same manufacturer or the same seller on eBay. Uh, this time, I'm not even going to use the keys. I'm not going to pick it. I want to know what it is about pin number seven. What kind of alien tech have they put in there to make, make this a, uh, a construction lock? So I'm going to cut it. Then I'm going to take my razor and cut it right there, right there, and I'm going to very gently lift the core off, and we'll get a look at chamber number seven in its virgin-like condition. All right, guys, it looks like I spent a lot of money, and maybe I should have been a little more observant. Check it out. In chamber number seven, there is a tiny little ball bearing. I mean, that thing is... Let me see if I can get him on a on a magnet. Yeah, I get all those pins too, but right there he is. There sure enough is a ball bearing inside of there. So let's go ahead and uh, let me grab the other half of this lock 
and let's see if we when we try the cutout key and then I pull it out I'm gonna hold my hand under and see if we can't capture that ball bearing all right guys let's try this again the other half of the cylinder of the one I cut in half did not have a ball bearing in it so I thought I tried it in a brand new lock just open the package and I tried it on this side he also contains no uh, ball bearing so even after turning it with the notched key like so doing the 360 I'll even do more than 360 slide it out and then you put the construction key back in this side it still works so maybe only one side is construction keyed so let's try this one uh, again take the construction key does work I take the owner's key does work now I'm going to put this guy in and I'm going to turn him a complete circle and then I'm going to pull them out very slowly. Hopefully we're going to hear the ball bearing hit this. If, if it doesn't fall out inside of one of those cutaways. Come on. Oh, maybe I didn't turn it all the way. Come on. He's caught. He's caught on something. There he goes. No ball bearing. All right, I did turn it, so let's now try the construction key now, see if he works. Okay, he does not work. So apparently the ball bearing falls off on the inside on one of these little, on the, the uh, skeletonized part of it. Let me get that magnet out of there. So apparently he falls out somewhere inside of here when you withdraw the key. So he's still inside of there, and I, it'll be, I could probably shake it, and eventually he'd come out, but there, this ball bearing... Let me lick the tip of my finger and get this little guy up here. He's so tiny that it's really not very likely I'm going to be able to shake him out of there. Everything in here, the, the lock, all the pins, by the way, are magnetic. So if this little ball bearing is steel, he probably stuck to something inside of there. We're never going to get him out. But it does work. That's how it works. It is not the uh, red paste as I originally thought. It's one of these tiny little ball bearings that that falls into one of the slots and uh, that way you can't use the construction key anymore because the only key different the only uh, pinning different is the very tip of it right there and you compare it to the owner's key and it would be right there so that's how that works anyway thanks guys sorry for all the uh, high levels of frustration but we finally figured it out no guessing thanks for your time thanks for your patience stay safe stay legal stay away from these locks Jesus mm -hmm.